So we're looking for the most general antiderivative of e to the x times the hyperbolic cosine of x, so solution. It may be tempting to try something like uh, integration by parts here, uh, but that, that's a bad idea. So just recall that the hyperbolic cosine of x is the average of e to the x and e to the negative x. Easy way to remember it. All right, so now let's integrate. So e to the x times the hyperbolic cosine of x is equal to e to the x times, well, the definition of hyperbolic cosine is this. We'll just make a substitution. So e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2 dx. This is equal to this 1 half here. Let's, let's pull it outside. So 1 half. And let's see. e to the x times e to the x. Well, how do you do that? Well, that's e to the x times e to the x. That's e to the x plus x. That's just e to the 2x. So this will be e to the 2x plus, again, now we'll distribute e to the x times e to the negative x. So let's see. e to the x times e to the negative x. That's e to the x plus negative x. That's e to the 0, which is 1. So this will be plus 1. Don't forget the parentheses, dx. Now, to integrate e to the 2x, um, you can make a substitution. The substitution would be u equals 2x, etc. You should do it if you don't know how. But in general, when you have e to the ax dx, it's just e to the ax divided by a plus c. This is, this is true as long as a is not 0. So in this case, we just have 1 half e to the 2x divided by 2 plus 1 half times x, because the integral of 1 is x, plus our constant. The last thing to do is just multiply the 2s. So you end up with 1 fourth e to the 2x plus 1 half x plus a constant. So that's it. It's a really easy problem, but it's really, really easy to approach this problem the wrong way. Um, it's very tempting to try something harder.